Palais, Palais, Palais by Sat. Look some good news. Hold on. Palais? Yes, that's right. Boy, Sat has something called. Hold on. Pale, pale, pale. Look, talk. Sat is having a special for this independent season, and you need to get connected to enjoy the benefits. It's called Pale, 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 Pale. Once you set up and connected with Sat, you can talk to your mother, grandmother, great grandmother, stepmother, stepbrother, stepsister, step the whole step. Pale is so sweet. With your connection to Sat Telecoms, and especially when you get your internet connection, no hidden fees, no hidden charges. You get free SAT to SAT telephone connection. You also get free installation and you get no charges on your talk time. And you get your telephone for free. You don't hear Pale, I do. So you have at home your TV, SAT TV. You have your internet, SAT internet. And now, phone, phone, look at Pale, 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 Pale. All your talk is sweet. Hello, hello. Take advantage of one of SAT's five internet packages in our Pale Pale specials. You can get the Breezy, the Warm Up, the Maverick, the Jetstream, and the Warp Drive. Don't forget the Pale Pale. These packages starting at $28.75. Pale Pale, yeah, don't forget from SAT. This independent season, don't forget, it's happening at SAT. Pale Pale. Festival, c'est magé, magé. Good boy, magé, magé. Mais SAT, c'est Pale Pale. Yep, Pale Pale. Yeah. Good evening, I am your presenter Larry Larock. Thank you for tuning in to SAT TV News. Among the major developments, WCK manager speaks on Buyogwada calm down. Former Curacao PM withdraws from new government. Storm hit New York declared major disaster area. And in sports, free West Indies players uncertain if they will play at the Caribbean 2020 tournament. Details of these and other stories after the break. Thank you for staying with us. Now for the details of the news. An exhibition was held at the Shalom Preschool on Monday, October 29th, where the children were introduced to the tools used years ago by our ancestors. Acting Prime Minister Mr. Ambrose George stated, the preschoolers are very important people in our society. Mr. George educated the children on the drastic changes from then compared to now. A lot of things have changed. Uh, for example, um, the way we dress, the past, um, whilst, whilst we maintain some of the tradition, especially at the time this year uh, when we celebrate our independence and we, we sort of reminisce and look back on, on, on what, we, what occurred in terms of our heritage. Um, so a lot of ch has changed. The way we dress, the, the way we cooked, um, because uh, these days we have well, what do you call fast foods, we have ready-made foods, we have processed foods. In the olden days, we have Although a lot of people still produce their fruits and vegetables and many other edibles, he says, many still rely on the Roso market. Mr. George added that in terms of transportation, people used to walk a lot more. Especially uh, going to the garden, uh, going to school. Um, I remember when I was growing up uh, in Newtown, where I was born, I attended school, I had to walk to school. Although it wasn't far, the Rosa Boys School by the Newtown Savannah. But then I went to the grammar school and I had to walk from Newtown to the grammar school, which is not far, but it was pride and joy for us to you know, get up in the morning, get ready for school, and to walk to school. Minister of Gender Affairs, Community Development and Social Services, Honorable Gloria Shillingford, told us children's stories about her childhood as well as her family routines. When my mother used to cook for us too, too and um, at the fireside, we had to carry the wood on a Saturday to ensure that there was enough wood in the kitchen for the week. So I know all about that. And, but it was our delight. 
to go to the garden and to gather the wood and to gather the ground provision and to bring it back. And I think that is what made us very strong. And we, you know, we could run and we would enjoy ourselves. And In addition, Mrs. Schillingford mentioned that she learned how to love, which just seems to be a lack of from our young people today. According to her, respect went a long way and she did not hesitate to inform the preschoolers. We are not to go with strangers and how they must learn to love and trust. And as you yourself love them, they will learn to trust you and to be able to trust adults. Please take care of our young ones and let us help to stop the abuse that goes on before young people. I see all of them looking nice and lovely this morning and active. I don't mind them moving around and whatever it is, that is what they will do. And if they do not do that, that means that they are ill and they are not normal children. Mrs. Schillingford intends on visiting again and sharing more information on Dominica's history with the Shalom preschoolers. Dr. Donald C. Peters, president of the Dominica State College, left for Canada this week. Dr. Peters was invited by the Government of Canada and the Canadian Bureau of International Education CBIE, to participate in the 2012 Emerging Leaders in the Americas collaboration program in Halifax, Nova Scotia. The collaboration mission brings together representatives from the Caribbean, Latin American and Canadian universities and colleges. This is being done with the goal of solidifying partnerships that will ultimately lead to agreements between institutions that can promote further education opportunities for Dominica State College students wishing to study in Canada. Since taking up the presidency at the Dominica State College, Dr. Peters has used his North American experience to establish articulation agreements with the U.S. universities willing to offer lower cost tuition and financial aid to Dominican students. Now through this new initiative, he hopes to do the same with the Canadian universities. Currently, the majority of the Dominica State College graduates who choose to further their education choose to study in the United States of America. Dr. Peter believes that his participation in this program will help create new opportunities for the Dominica State College students in Canada. Dr. Peter's visit to Canada is being sponsored by the Government of Canada, Department of Foreign Affairs and International Trade, DAFIT, and the Canadian Bureau of International Education, CBIE. The collaboration mission will be held from October 30th to November 7th, 2012. Taurus Riley and Damian Jr. Gong Mali kept the Windsor Park Sports Stadium blazed on nights two and three of the 16th edition of the World Creole Music Festival. The crowd embraced the first time artists as they owned the stage with songs like She's Royal, Superwoman, and Affairs of the Heart. Other performers on that night were living legends Michael Henderson and Ophelia Marie. This year has been very special for one of the two leading ladies because it is the first night that they performed together. We've performed uh, on the same stage outside of the island, but um, this time it's the first time the Dominican public got to see us do something together. So that makes it quite different and um, I know the repertoire was a little more spicy than normal, I'd say. <laughs> I would think so, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and the musicians were excellent. Um, we, because we've had our rough times, but it didn't show on stage, except maybe it's for me, but um, Mikael, you rescued me once or twice, so thanks for that. It was good. We enjoyed it. Onion from the Burning Flames did not seem to lose his touch after so many years of performing. He says he is grateful to represent Antigua and the wider Caribbean in this year's 16th edition of the World Creole Music Festival. Derek Rapiters, who had not performed in a while, Express that we should always strive to promote our local artists before we sell the international ones. At the end of the day, he says that it is the local artists that will promote Dominica and bring in much needed revenue. Because when the, when the, when the um, foreigners come in here, they're looking to see the participation of the locals because it's about uh, Dominica. You know, it's a Dominica festival, you know. And the other thing is that you now the money. Most of us most of us are supposed to be staying here. However, now our major product is exporting money and exporting people. 
So we need to keep some more money there in our local economy because it's man like me that go into the market and supporting the local vendors and so right. So we have to look about that, you know. So that is my take on it. Really and truly, it's supposed to be excited on a local level. I'm the crowd at the stadium on Saturday night was very familiar with Taurus Riley's songs and enjoyed every moment of his performance. He says music needs to be thought-provoking and when he performs he wants the message to stay within the listeners and impart something positive on their lives. After people sing the melodies, the lyrics from me, so if you're singing She's Raya, after a while a woman starts to say, wow, she, you know, she's Raya, this man is calling me a queen, you know what I mean? So definitely, I think that the words really last now. So I'm particular with the words that I use. But I can't tell every artist to sing like me because variety is the spice of life and it have different moods and different music to fill those moods. As the night grew old on Sunday, the stadium crowd grew for Damian Jr. Gong Mali as his debut performance swept the crowd of their feet. <laughs> Mali was happy to be a part of Dominica's World Creole Music Festival and visiting Dominica for the very first time. He says music is international and breaks all boundaries and he's happy to be a part of Dominica's World Creole Music Festival. How do other people draw from the music what they you know, would like to draw from the music and how it relates to their life? You know what I said? So I would read, you know, a lot of the time I'm always interested to hear what people say. You know, when people come and tell you what your songs mean to them. You know, sometimes you love even lyrics and what you meant to say in the lyrics, they completely interpret it different, but in even a greater way than you meant, you know what I'm saying? And moments like those is what I really love about what I do, that each individual can take away from the music what they need, rather than me trying to force people until they say, what is it for you, or what is it for you, you understand? T-Vites, who have participated in the festival many times before, were glad to be back again, this time to pay homage to Jeff Joe. He remembers when Jeff was in Haiti for the inauguration of one of the Haitian presidents and he is honored to have learned from the legend. My, my dad was a very good friend of Jeff and growing up we, were, we used to be listening to Max Soluton at the house because my mom and my family were huge fans so I know the, 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 you know, the music and I know Jeff's voice pretty much you know, very well. But apart from that, I've, I've gotten close with Jeff through, you know, backstage festivals and then my, I was, I was um, introduced to him by my dad and my, my mom. Since then we, we became friends, you know, we, we were tight speaking on the phone every day but, you know, we, every time I saw him we used to be talking but I, I, I remember him as a joyous guy. The Knights also saw performances by Rising Stars of Dominica, Crossfire, celebrating 16 years of the band, Gramax and the Midnight Groovers. Recently, authorities in Guadeloupe started clamping down on an offshoot of Dominica's homegrown music bouillon as they said it could have an effect on that genre in the French island. Known as Bouillon Guada, which is an offshoot from bouillon, it is reported to be causing a lot of problems in Guadeloupe because of its lewd and violent lyrics. Authorities in Guadeloupe have been placing restrictions on Bouillon Guada and anything related to Bouillon music which is and could be potentially dangerous to Bouillon. Manager of the WCK band Mr. Keith Goddard says, although he does not have the full knowledge of the situation, he said that what the French authorities are really concerned about is the lyrics in the Bouillon Guada music. So, um, it's something that I think we need to address as artists here and bands, the Bouillon bands. I mean, where the pioneers of Bouillon music are willing to lead and to having some discussions at least with the French and among ourselves too, the rest of the artists and the rest of the bands to see exactly how we can get down to the bottom of the problem and at least rectify it because if there's a quote-unquote um, regulation placed on the music, um, for what I'm understanding is that the first approach is that they want to ban the music from playing in the clubs in Guadalupe, uh, which would be, I mean, it would really be helpful to the industry. 
Mr. Gordon says it is vital that all those involved in Buya music work as a group to find solutions to this problem while stating discussions with the French will be important. He added that music has no barriers and such, we should not place ourselves in such a position. On a more positive note, the WCK Band was awarded for the 25-year contribution of Buya music at the World Creole Music Festival. Mr. Goddard says that this award is well deserved as the band has stuck together through thick and thin to continue delivering quality music to all fans. Coming from a solid performance at the World Creole Music Festival, Mr. Goddard says he enjoyed the band performance which took a lot of planning. Lead singer Nai was also satisfied with the band's performance. We have a good team, keeping it gelling, keeping it fresh, interactive and up to date. That's how we make sure we execute all the time. Antigan soca artist Claudette Peters, who was part of the band's Creole Music Festival performance, says she loves working with the band. It's been a pleasure working with WCK band. I mean, all the guys, we've been really gelled together. I mean, although they're not really familiar of dealing with a female in the band, it's truly an experience. But at the end of the day, we're all, um, you know, involved in the music and we, it is something that we love daily. Um, but I must say, I met, met a few really, really, really nice friends um, when it comes to the band and also meeting a lot of, um, you know, new friends in Dominica and, of course, abroad because. Another lead singer, Delhi, says being part of the band and feeding people with music is one of his joys and is something that he really loves to do. In regards to rumors that have been circulating about the departure from the band, Nai says, Alright, it's been a pleasure with me performing with the band, for the band. There's nothing wrong in trying to pursue an endeavor which I'm about to pursue, but I'm always going to be available whether or not here or uh, to perform with the band. So it's not really taken out of WCK. Whenever I'll be available, I most definitely will be available. As WCK to me is like more than just playing music. It's like a family. It's been 13 years and I'm not going to throw it away just because I want to pursue something else. So I think people need to get it straight. Mr. Goddard said Nye is an artist who needs to develop himself besides the band so he does not have any problem in him pursuing personal endeavors. He added that after the unfortunate death of Nye's father, they had a discussion where he told Nye that he should pursue his dreams besides that of being in the band. Nurses are being urged to adapt to the changing times as the practices are changing. This message came from Dr. Paula Abraham on Monday, October 29th, marking the opening of a week of activities to mark the 50 years of formal nursing education in Dominica. And it's changing to accommodate a rapidly changing environment, an environment that is impacted by, you know, evidence-based practice, medical research, you know, the economy. Your practice will change based on what your economy is. Your practice will change based on what governmental policies and regulations are. Your practice will change. And we will see that all practice in Dominica has actually changed. Dr. Abraham pointed out that patient care is becoming much more complex and challenging in modern times, and nurses are expected to deliver care with the same outcome whether short-staffed or not. She said that the limited staff, nurses are still expected to provide quality care service and safe patient care no matter what the circumstances may be. Nurses these days are now moving. It has not come to Dominica, but we are moving from the hard copy charts to electronic charting. So at one point, at one point electronic charting will be here. And despite you know, the challenges of delivering care to your patients with shortage of staff, you will still be required to go onto the computer when it comes and document your care for the day. And we have to adapt. We have no choice. Mrs. Denise Edwards says this week of activity took a lot of planning by a Jubilee committee, which worked very hard to ensure preparations went well. 
Mrs. Edwards mentioned that there will be a conference presentation this week hosted by local nurses. Some of the topics are caring, accountability, evidence-based nursing, and addressing chronic and non-communicable diseases which accounts for the greatest morbidity rate and mortality in Dominica. It will not just be a talk and chalk kind of exercise. We will have variety and among this will be a debate where two set of students who were trained for the most part on the two different systems will debate the topic. Is apprenticeship style system better for Dominican needs than the collegiate type system? It is mainly for bragging rights. I'm not sure if after the debate we'll be able to settle this cause because there will always be an argument as the nurses before were better or not. We will settle as come. Maybe at our river revelry on Friday, we will have competition among groups and the winners will earn the respect. There will also be a panel discussion with people stemming from the first nursing class and also students recently graduated in the nursing course of the Dominica State College. This discussion will give them an idea where they want to go in the next 50 years while imparting and sharing knowledge. On Wednesday, October 31st, there will be theatrical performances where the alumni will enact the play Lion Heart Sisters. Thursday night, we can say is a crowning event. That's when we'll really honor our heritage. That's when we'll celebrate our success with a grand jubilee award ceremony and dinner. At this ceremony, we will honor a percentage, a sample of the people who make us, who have made us proud. We are aware that within the budgetary constraints we had, we could not honor each and every one of us because we have all contributed. However, we took some we felt representing what the others are and we will celebrate. We'll also honor some institutions who have made us proud over the year. I'm deliberately not saying who they are. You need to come to the dinner to cheer, to applaud them when they get their honor. In an effort to recapture the old days, an oldie goldies night will take place directly after the dinner where the old hits from every decade will be played to cater to all. Mrs. Hilda Leslie, responsible for launching of the Nurses Jubilee magazine, says it took a lot of hard work, but looking at the final product, it was all worth it. It is a synopsis of 50 years of formal nursing in Dominica. It is educational, it is historical, and filled with memories of nursing, in particular, your nursing life, your nursing career. You must have a copy on your bookshelf, which will serve as an avenue to refresh your memory of nursing in Dominica. A copy of the magazine was presented to the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Education and the president of the Dominican Nurses Association, amongst others. Color Slip Show may just be the most popular music genre for Dominica. The National Cooperative Credit Union, NCCU, held a prize-giving ceremony on Monday, October 29th, where President of the NCCU, Mr. Dexter Duke, believes that the show was a success and he expects nothing less next year. But I feel ob obligated to personally thank our CADAS partners who have contrib contributed tremendously in making the show a success. I want to assure you that we will be requesting your partnership next year. In addition, I want to appeal to you to engage me in discussions with ideas so that we can tweak the show in a manner that will increase movement of your products. I strongly believe that it's in our interest when you do, when you succeed, or we do also. Mr. Duke recommended the finalists and wished them the best in the upcoming year. He also gave a special congratulation to the 2012 Caras Monarch Web Webster Marie. Mr. Ducre announced that next year there will be another Caras Lip Show show. I want to announce that our patrons have demanded that we have a Caras show next year and we have responded in the positive. For the 2013 show, the format will be as follows. It will consist of four judged appearances. Elimination, quarters, semi-finals, and finals with one song per artist. Every artist will start from eliminations. This will allow greater publicity of the show. The 
artist and the song. The price for the ticket will remain at $40 in advance and $50 at the gate. The show is scheduled for the Saturday before the weekend of the World Creole Music Festival 2013 and tickets will remain at $40. Let us turn back to 2012. This is the most interesting section of the dress. I promised that the committee would release publicly the financial results of the event. This is a promise that must be kept because we strongly believe that this event, like NCCO, belongs to the people. The information is as follows. Revenue, $90,035.41. Expenses, $110,324.14. A deficit of $12,288.73. This we see as an investment from NCCU into the Calas Lipsa competition. Here's a clip of some of the finalists receiving their checks. Richard Benno Christmas. Ruben John. Many of the participants look forward to next year's Caras Lipso competition. The Fort Young Hotel's waterfront restaurant was packed on Saturday, October 27th, as some lucky Diddy Cell customers got the rare chance to meet Jamaican reggae musician Taurus Riley. This was made possible as they were winners of a Diddy Cell World Creole Music Festival competition. Most were excited to see him and remove photos, while others used the opportunity to ask questions. One visitor all the way from Anchorage, Alaska asked Mr. Riley how long he has been in the music business and what made him write the song Superhuman. I've been in the music business a long time, been around the music business since I was a very young youth because my father's a singer so he introduced me to studios and the whole music scene very early. But I started to get professional about 1998 in where I you know, just finished my school and ready to go, you know what I mean? And I released my first album, I think it was 2003, did? Yeah. 2003 or 2004. And since then, no turning back. Super Woman, I think you're talking about. The same person around here named Dean Fraser introduced me to that song. It's not my original song, it's a song by an artist named Robin Dick. But we kind of put our twist to it and give it the title and the signature. So that's the answer to your questions. Mr. Riley said what influences his music is the everyday life experiences and meeting new people in addition to traveling to new places. All people present were also treated to a performance by the Point Michel Cultural Group. Both the old and young turned out in large numbers at the Bayfront straight after the second day of the World Creole Music Festival for the Creole Board La Mer. Foreigners as well as locals danced, ate, drank and really enjoyed themselves. From the post office to the Royal Bank, there were individuals swamped on the streets all enjoying themselves. WCK certainly rocked the crowd with their performance and the public seemed to like what they were getting and simply could not get enough. Lead singers of the band who goes by the names of Delia Nai were both filled with energy and delivered great performances.
Vendors prepared various types of food that were sold out due to the amount of people who participated at the event. Foods such as soups, fried and baked chicken, fish and corn, amongst others, were also available. Yeah, The crowd became further hyperactive as the Creole board lame came to an end. Individuals claimed that this by far was the best event since it began and they hope it will be the same next year. This has been the local segment of the news. Coming up next, regional highlights. It's only when we unite as one, then a lot more thing can be done. Stop this useless fight down, killing out your own brother man. Time we rise and all realize, we have an enemy in his guise. Standing right in the mix of you, got to know who is who. This is Derek Rapp Peters and you're watching Sat TV. That's what I have, Sat TV. Sat TV, that's the way to go. Ra! To the world. Ooh, didi, ooh, didi, ooh, didi.